Hi, Walter. I know that information can be uh, transmitted in a number of ways in writing, uh, through papers, white papers, official scholastic papers, uh, audio, video, a lot of different ways. I'm going to respond to you in video format. Uh, thank you, by the way, for taking the time to respond to my email and ask for me to clarify where you're wrong and uh, give specific examples uh, about the Israeli Hamas Gaza situation. I'm a big fan of yours, uh, have been for many, many years since becoming a libertarianish voluntarist uh, in about 2007. And actually, probably around 94, 95, I first read Atlas Shrugged as a young man, 21 years old or so. And uh, that's kind of the, was the beginning of the journey. But I wouldn't say I was a full fledged anarchist voluntarist until. 2007, 2008. So I, I'm not terribly experienced, but I also didn't just happen upon this yesterday. Um, I gained a lot from Stefan Molyneux before he stopped being a voluntarist, uh, libertarian type person. Um, I learned a lot from the late Carl Watner, who I knew you, know you knew. Um, right now, Patrick Smith, I think, is the, the person with whom I most closely aligned our philosophies. Uh, so I, I've got a lot of the answers to the questions that he clarified in the recent video that you and uh, Alan did with him. I don't care for Alan much. Um, yeah, so I'm just I'm writing this to you, not to him. Uh, he's welcome to listen or respond. I don't care. It occurs to me that it's not a good idea. But you don't ask me <laughs> if I think the things you do is a, if they're a good idea or not. It's not like I'm your daddy or your uh, uh, life mentor or something like that. Um, so yeah, I probably shouldn't give unsolicited feedback. But writing a book uh, from a perspective that isn't yours seems really silly. So does uh, writing articles to promote that book or to get, get the viewpoint out. Uh, and I know, I get, I get the idea of, you know, playing devil's advocate or playing uh, playing the game of, well, you know what, from a different perspective, what would this same problem look like? But I don't think it's disanalogous to say that if you're going to rape a woman, there's a whole field of study about the best type of rope to buy, the best way to, way to tie those knots to, to keep her restrained so that you can rape her. Um, there's probably a whole field of knowledge around that. But I wouldn't dream of writing a book or writing articles or training people and say, oh, by the way, I, I know that rape is wrong. Uh, it's an initiation of violence. So I, I don't personally like it. But a lot of people, you know, we know there are going to be rapes and a lot of people are doing it. And in order for me to get any attention from folks, for me to be relevant, I, I can't just be a non-rapist sectarian. I, I kind of have to, you know, expand my horizons a little bit. So here's my book on how to best tie up women to rape them. That seems to me to just be ludicrous. Um, our philosophy is a philosophy of, of peace. Um, and I know that you are an anarcho-capitalist, not a voluntarist. And I, I, my understanding of those words is that voluntarism takes the additional step beyond anarcho-capitalism to say that everything should be voluntary, uh, voting isn't voluntary, uh, or you know, being ruled over is not voluntary, being taxed isn't voluntary, so the voluntarist just doesn't participate in electoral politics um, or any part of governments. You know, we don't, we don't even say, hey, I think this candidate would be better than that candidate, or here's how we should fight this war or that war. Uh, in my understanding is that the voluntarist is the principled person. We're kind of that standard bearer who says, no, if a thing is wrong, I won't do that thing. I won't condone that thing. I won't encourage that thing. Um, kind of that stoic perspective. Now, it's not a pragmatic, uh, it's not a pragmatic perspective. It's not a, you know, you're an economist. You're not a moral philosopher. You're an economist. And so, Maybe you should be looking for the best economy in things. Uh, how do how do we do a thing the best? Uh, maybe that's your position. 
maybe I'm wanting you to be something that you're not, someone who you are not. Uh, but the idea of, of looking at a, a huge problem, and I'm not going to go over everything in great detail because Patrick already asked you about these things, and I disagree with your responses your and Alan's responses. Um, but even as, as assuming, um, uh, arguendo, that all Jews are lovely, wonderful, brilliant, well-intentioned, awesome people, and they got all their property, and there's a long chain of uh, however, whatever percentage in the in Gaza is owned by uh, Jews, uh, whatever that percentage is, there's perfect, clear paperwork going back for 10,000, 20,000 years that, yep, that, that family owns it, and they've passed it down generation to generation. And uh, again, arguendo, uh, Jews want peace, and they're they're just loving, lovely, spectacular, groovy people. And then arguendo, Arabs are meh, meh, uh, not so great. Um, a bunch of them are just wacko, Muslim kn knuckleheads. Uh, they want violence. They don't want happiness. They're manipulative. They, they're just horrible human beings. Uh, Hamas is a kind of the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of badness under that. And yeah, you can't even say that every woman is innocent. Um, yeah, okay, maybe she's being beaten by her husband and has to obey him and doesn't really have an escape. But if she's cooking him meals and he's going out and using that energy from her meals to build a bomb, she isn't really innocent. Okay, that, that could be argued. But, and I'm using old numbers, this is, and I'm not going to call it genocide because I know some people don't think it is what Israel is doing in Gaza. So we can call it mass homicide. No, if homicide means wrongful killing. Let's just call it killing over 30,000 human beings of whom maybe 10,000 are arguendo bad guys. The other 20,000 are admittedly innocent victims, or as some people flippantly say, collateral damage. Well, just like theft can't be, you, know, you, you try to soften the word by using the word taxation. Well, no, that doesn't work. And you can't minimize or soften the concept of a little eight-year-old girl being burned in a horrible, horrible manner where she just for uh, her body, 80% of her body is just a thousand degree burns. It's just miserable from a bomb or a burning building or whatever. Uh, that little eight-year-old girl isn't the enemy. And and I, I don't I don't accept the idea, oh, it's collateral damage. Um, yep, the bad guys were hiding behind her and using her as a shield. And yep, tough cookies for her. Too bad. Uh, no, I'm I'm not buying that. And maybe this is just the the stoic aspect of me that says, no, uh, I, I do the right thing, and the right thing is not burning a little eight year old girl and making her feel this torturous pain for hours, days, weeks. Uh, that's not something I am going to do. My my finger is not going to pull that trigger. My arm is not going to swing that sword. Um, others might do that, but I am not going to do it myself. I'm not going to encourage it. I'm not going to condone it. And yes, I think the charge would be very fair that, well, Shepard, that's, that's pie in the sky, dreamy stuff. Um, that's, you know, you're just being, you're like these dang liberals. You just don't realize what the real world is like. And if you lived in a ghetto, you would understand. I think I kind of get it, despite my very fortunate life. I, I think I, I kind of get it, not as well as people who live in that environment, but I, I get it. And I still have to take that stoic uh, moral stance of, if it ain't right, don't do it. And I'm, I'm opposed to your idea of Israel continuing the killing whether the killing is a uh, uh, self-defense, somehow stretched into believing that that's a self-defense move um, or not. Even arguendo, it's self-defense, fine. No, uh, I disagree. I, I agree with Patrick's side of things that, yes, there there is joint culpability when somebody does something bad. Someone initiates violence, the robber comes in and he's swinging his sword 
and the only way to stop him is to shoot him, but he's holding, uh, uh, who do you use, James Madison or somebody? Adam Smith. Um, Adam Smith is, uh, between you, he's the innocent victim, and the only way for you to stop this madman with a sword is to also to shoot through Adam Smith. Um, I disagree that I have zero culpability. Yeah, it's a bad guy who grabbed Adam Smith and started initiating violence. That's It's his responsibility that this thing happened. However, every split second after he does that, it's my decision how I react to it. And I get to choose what my higher value is, killing innocent people or being killed. And that's a subjective value. I hope that I would have the guts, if the time came, to make the moral choice and say, yeah, I'm going to die. Um, I'm not going to commit suicide. There's a big difference between committing suicide and uh, not preserving yourself. Absolute difference. That's that's just doesn't that's not fair to say that that's committing suicide. Uh, it's saying dying as a result of doing the right thing. Um, so it's not suicide if you choose to give your your child the last crumbs of bread as you're both starving to death in hopes that they might survive and you give them the food and then you die. Um, that's not you committing suicide. That's you choosing something that was a higher value. And I, I also strongly disagree with the collectivist angle that, and, and I don't think, I, I think Alan is more of the type of libertarian that Donald Trump is. Like maybe occasionally something he thinks is a little bit liberty leaning, but that's not the the main focus of his life, focus of his life. Uh, but you, I, I believe that you are passionate about liberty and you do study it and you do care about it and you've devoted your life to it and you've been a mentor of mine for many, many years. Um, so I, I'm really frustrated by the collectivism of, of we ought to do this. The Jews ought to do this to the, to the Hamas folk or to the Arab folks or whatever. Um, uh, there are only individuals. You know that. I know that. And yes, for convenience of speech, I can refer to a bunch of individuals who practice uh, being economists. I can say economists think that blah, blah, blah. But that's a generalization and it should be taken with a grain of salt and appreciated for what it is, uh, a way to make a, a conversational flow with a few fewer words, which is not something that I'm an expert at, obviously. Uh, but this collectivism just doesn't cut up for me. The collectivism doesn't take into account that little eight-year-old girl. W what do you call her? She's just a innocent victim of collateral damage. Is she a an Arab? Is she a a Hamas person? Um, what what do you what kind of category do we put her into? We can't just say when I say we, I mean you and me, and thinking moral philosophers can't just say. Uh, we ought to go kill them. Well, who's them? We've got to define them. And if them means our enemies and everybody else within a city block, that doesn't seem like a good thing to do. Does that seem like that's a, a rational, peaceful, libertarian thing to do? I, I don't think so. I think we have to look at people as individuals. Another issue that I uh, take issue with is uh, if we're going to use Murray Rothbard as some godlike figure who is uh, just all-knowing and perfect in every way, then we can't cherry-pick at the same time. Um, and I choose instead to cherry-pick. I would say, you know, if, if a human being, whether it's Walter Block or Shepard or Murray or whomever, if we say something that's really smart and makes good sense, yeah, let's repeat it and let's be grateful that the person made that smart comment. But we can't just say that everything Murray ever said was right and everything he ever said was wrong or, or you know, either either or. Um, and that's kind of what I'm seeing is you're saying, well, he said to check everything and, you know, make sure we're not being sectarians. And, and that's kind of the basis of your argument for pretending to be what hopefully you're not. And, and I... If we're going to do that, then we can't later say, well, he was wrong when he said that I shouldn't be having the perspective that I do. He got that one wrong. Well, no, he's either sometimes right, sometimes wrong, um, or always. And I don't think it's the always. So I, I don't I don't like this idea of using, well, he said to do it, so therefore I'm going to do it. Well, no, you're not doing every single thing he said. So if he had an idea that was good, run with it. But your argument or your your defense of that choice should not be that he said to do it. It should be independent 
uh, it should be you saying, well, the reason I choose to argue as a statist is blah, blah, blah. Not because some guy who is sometimes right and sometimes wrong told me to. That, that doesn't make good sense. Also, I would like to distinguish, uh, and you know this better than I do, uh, but I think sometimes this is lost in the argument, uh, if somebody can be called libertarian or not. And you talked about the continuum of all the way from, you know, George Bush or, no, you did not have George Bush. Uh, who's the current guy? Is it Barack Obama that's in now? I don't know. It's 2024. I don't pay attention. But there's some guy in now and there's another guy who wants it, Trump or Biden or somebody wants to get in. And you were saying that these people are at, uh, you know, very little libertarianism and it's a continuum and that they are at one end of the spectrum. And no, you couldn't argue that Trump or Biden are libertarians because they're just saying outrageous things. And then you go all the way to the opposite end. And I would say, you know, maybe someone like Larkin Rose or Patrick Smith, or I, I hope I include myself in that, that I'm pretty principled about things. And just because I'm emotionally passionate about something, I don't try to change libertarianism to, to fit that. And I don't step outside to argue it. I don't step outside of basic libertarian philosophy um, to argue it from other perspectives. So I would say we're kind of at opposite ends of that. And then you gave the example also, and this was in the uh, Anarchist interview with Patrick, about how there's the spectrum and a marijuana a person against uh, wanting marijuana to be criminalized or whatever, that that person would definitely not be a libertarian. Well, I think calling for pretty widespread collateral damage isn't that a little bit worse than putting somebody in a cage for the weekend for smoking a joint? Like, they're both bad things, obviously, but I think advocating for a whole collective to go after a whole nother collective and kill 10,000 kids in the process and 10,000 women of whom at least half probably weren't active combatants, so 15,000 people plus, ah, that's not cutting it for me. Now, a concession. Uh, I think it's only fair that I concede that if we're talking about libertarianism, are we talking about the uh, critical thinking? Are we talking about moral philosophy? Are we talking about the concept that, that we want a little bit more freedom? And so if, if Trump wants a little bit more freedom in one area, or Biden does, we're then going to call them libertarians? Um, what exactly is it that we're what realm are we arguing about here? And so I would say from a moral standpoint, your arguments about uh, Gaza, uh, Israel, etc. completely fail. They're horrible. From a purely critical thinking, statist, uh, rational, pragmatic, classical liberal standpoint, maybe they win gloriously. But I choose subjectively to include a lot of morality in with my critical thinking and my libertarian views. So when I look at something, I don't just say, is it rational? Does two plus two equal four? Um, I also look to say, is there something horrible about this that violates the non-aggression principle, that violates all of the other concepts or principles of collectivism versus individualism of, of that kind of thing? Um, so for me, I admit that I am including some subjectivism uh, into my arguments against uh, Israel's, which is a collective, I shouldn't say that, against the government of a country, the government slash religion of a uh, country, um, going after the people who are passionate about a different religion and are trying to get their own government or whatever's happening. Um, I, yeah, I, I think we just we just do disagree there. And I think my perspective is the more libertarian perspective. So uh, again, I'm making this video because I didn't want to just, you know, you were nice enough to respond to my email. I didn't want to just drop things and, uh, you know, not give you the honor of a, uh, of a response. So I, I know we disagree. You've thought about these things. You've come to different conclusions than I have. Uh, but I just wanted to say, for the record, my hero, by the way, I've taken selfies with uh, celebrities in the background twice in my life. Once was, I think, 2007. Uh, I drove four hours to Salt Lake City to see Ron Paul speak. And uh, I, I took a selfie with him in the background. And then the second time was nine years later uh, in Anarchapoco. Uh, Nathan Freeman knew I was a huge fan. And after I took the selfie, I'm I'm just like, I can't believe I was sitting in the same row as Walter Block. And uh, so Nathan says, hey, he wants to take a tour and buy some trinkets in town. You want to guide him? And I'm like, yes. Uh, then it turned out you didn't need to go. But just so you know, I'm a big years. And 
part of that, I think, is saying, hey, brother, I think you're getting this one wrong. And I do think that in this case.